Shots fired! Shots fired! You know. <laughs> So we're going to review a video of a deputy that makes an arrest, puts him in the back of the car. As he walks past the car, an acorn drops on the top of the patrol car. He mistakes it for suppressed gunfire and starts unloading on this vehicle. We're going to talk about some of the things that I see in this. Now, look, I'm looking at it from a different perspective. I've seen lots of people comment on this. None of them have ever been a police officer. I am definitely not excusing what this guy does at all. I'm going to point out all the flaws and show you how screwed up this is. And I'm going to talk about when he got hired and my thoughts on his hire date and what's going to happen to policing because I've talked about it before. He's a fairly new hire and that's important to know. But we're going to break this situation down. I'm going to talk about some psychological things that are occurring with this guy. There's a correlation with church security. You guys are carrying guns. You are in the defense of others and their mistakes that he makes that I've seen church security officers make as well. And I think it's important to talk about it. Let's watch the video. He just arrested a gentleman for something like, it was like sending threatening texts or something like that. He is walking back to his patrol car. His partner, who I think is a sergeant, is behind him and he's just gonna walk up. He's doing whatever it is that he's gotta do. But you see the acorn tree right there, right next to the patrol car. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go back for a minute. He does some <laughs> some of these tumbles and stuff that he does. I don't know what's going on. You obviously heard nothing, right? You heard nothing. He heard something. A lot of people are making comments of like, "Well, it was a handcuffed prisoner. How can he shoot at him?" There had been incidents. You can go and look at the videos of people getting out of their slipping out of their cuffs because they weren't cuffed properly. And then getting the AR out of the front of the vehicle and shooting at people. It it's happened. But obviously not here. If you're gonna shoot at somebody, you have to have an identifiable threat. Now look at where he's sitting. He's got tinted windows. He's laying on the ground. How can he even see the threat? He's got no visible threat. He's got nothing. He's in condition black, which means he doesn't see or hear anything. He's about to speak gibberish. Now listen, is these roles that he's doing too, I don't know what that was just weird man the whole thing's weird watch watch the gibberish that comes out of his or listen to the gibberish that comes out of his mouth here in a minute what in the car yeah he shot through the car oh Okay, horrible reload in there. And then if you listen to the gibberish that comes out, he is not seeing anything. He's got total tunnel vision. He is totally blacked out. He's out of it. And he says he's been shot. I, I don't know where any of this is coming from. He's had a total psychological break, it seems like. And don't ever drop your gun and just leave it there. Like keep your, get a reload going and get back in the fight. Side note, it's a SIG 320 and it performed the way it was supposed to. You go back, look at my SIG 320 videos. Anyways, just funny. I, I'm, I'm good. I feel weird, but I'm good. You feel weird because you're having a psychotic break, dude. You're just out of it. I'm good, I'm good. I 
don't know. I might have hit my vest. I'm thinking this guy is a veteran. Just looking at his uh, black band, it's for a fallen brother. Uh, that's more of a military looking one than a cop one. His partner unloaded on the car too. And she got, now there was an internal affairs investigation. Let's go back. And look at the the sergeant though that was with him. He she didn't get any repercussions out of this whole thing. And I, I personally, I think I've been in this position before, where literally I was with three other. We had a SWAT call out. I got three people shooting, and me and another SWAT guy are not shooting. And I'm literally going like, "What did they see? I, I did not see the threat that they saw. I didn't shoot because I didn't see the threat they saw, and I'm responsible for every bullet that leaves my gun." Is it possible they made a mistake? 100% they could have made a mistake. In fact, one of the officers that was shooting, I know shot because everybody else was shooting and didn't see the threat. Only two people saw the threat. What does this have to do with church security? Let's talk about it. So this one thing I want to talk about on the cop side of things, he's a post-2020 hire. And if you guys have heard me talk about this before, many departments, I don't know about this department, if they're lowering their standards or not. But the applicant pool is low and there are people that are being hired that never should have been hired. How come? Because the defund the police movement really worked. And now nobody wants to be a cop because of videos like this and other things going on that why do you want to put yourself in that position? You're prosecuting cops for murder that did, that were clearly self-defense shootings, which this would be a great incident where you would want to prosecute the guy. And so it seems like since 2020, the applicant pool, we're hiring people that we never would have hired 10 years ago. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're going to keep having guys like this do stuff like this. And it's going to be bad for law enforcement all the way around. Now, let's go into the church security side of things. And let's talk about this incident, how it compares to us, and what we can do to make ourselves better and make sure we don't have something like this. The biggest thing is screening and hiring. I just put out a newsletter over at ChristianWarriorTraining.com that talks about how to interview people for the job. A lot of people are just getting selected because they were a vet, they were a cop. They have a CCW, they have whatever, but nobody ever got screened, backgrounded, or even interviewed. Here, this cop, I can tell you, I would love to see this guy's psychological evaluation because you have to have a psychological screening before you become a police officer. He had an absolute mental break on this, and I'd love to see what that, that psychological screening looks like in that background investigation to see if there were some shortcuts done. So for us on the church security side, we want to make sure that we screen our people, that we hire people based on their qualifications. I know it's a volunteer position, but you can't put any Yahoo out there to protect the church. Another one is training and education. The officer that was covering him that unloaded on the car, I don't think should have been, but she didn't see a threat. She just started unloading on the car with no viable threat identified. You fix that through training. So just because your partner's firing doesn't mean that you fire too. You've got to see the same threats, right? This isn't Fallujah where somebody says, hey, there's firing coming from the house and everybody unloads on the house. This is America and American streets. We have to have some discipline. I do see that when we do scenarios, when we do active shooter training, I do see one person fire and other people fire simply because the other person's firing. And that's not something that we do. The other issue is accountability measures. This accountability measures includes reviews of your personnel to make sure that they're functioning at a high level. And if they're not, we retrain them, we provide training for them and make sure they are the, the best person they can be when they're out there. The other issue is teamwork and communication. Okay, he's in condition black. Remember that one part where he was just speaking complete gibberish? He's obviously not communicating clearly. What fixes that up is some combat breathing and doing a lot of reality-based training or scenario training to where they do this repetitively so it becomes repetition. And you have less incidents of people going into condition black like that. Like I just mentioned, scenario-based training is super important. You have to go through incidents every month. Every month, set up scenario-based training for your people. 
so they can roll through all the various things that occur. As an example, last week, I took 40 of my team members out to contact suspicious vehicles. They had never done it before. And now they've done it a whole bunch of times. They've done it at least five times. And so they now know what it's like to do that. And they're not doing it for the first time. And they've got all the bugs worked out. Look, this incident is completely embarrassing, but also completely preventable. We need to stop hiring people that are unqualified. And we need to increase our training. Now, look, I full, my full-time job is training cops. And one thing I've noticed is that there is less training in the classroom and more training online because nobody can make training because there's not enough bodies on the street. So they're hiring people that are unqualified to get bodies on the street. And those people can't even make training. And it's just, it's, it's horrible. And it's the same thing with church security. Most church security team members are well north of 50. And it's because the younger guys can't do it because they've got families and everything else. And I wanted to show this video because there are correlations of what occurred with this gentleman and what can occur in a church. Now, the most important thing to remember out of all of this is to remember your ABCs, always be caring.